Hello and welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. I have a special arrangement for you this evening. A song called Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered by Rogers and Hart. And I'll talk about the techniques later on. But giving you another quote, keeping up with my quotes, this is one by Duke Ellington. And he was one of my favorite musicians of all time. Great pianist, composer, arranger, band leader and so on. He said, I never had much interest in the piano until I realized when I played a girl would appear on the bench on my right side and another one would appear on the left side. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, it is true. If you play well, if you play the piano well, you will meet girls. So keep up the good work. Here we go now with my arrangement of Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered. Starting out, I want to mention that this arrangement is available for you to download on my website for free. Just go to my website and go to where it says free music downloads and you can download this, this uh, for no charge. I'm going to try to cover four categories of techniques that I used in this arrangement. The drop two technique, which is a voicing technique of spreading it, spreading the voicings. The locked hands technique, which is a way of doubling the melody and putting the chord in the right hand. Block chord technique, where I put the chord in the left hand, the full block chord in the left hand, with some, also some fourth voicings. And then ending up with arpeggiated mo movement in the left hand with octaves in the right hand, so it's spread out, so you're getting a bigger sound. Those are four important techniques, I think, to learn. Uh, the first two are kind of difficult, so, but uh, the spread voicing and the block chords and, of course, the arpeggios and so on, they're all, all good techniques to learn. So we'll start out with the, first of all, with the um, our introduction, and I try to write an interesting introduction that's going to fit the song, and the song starts out like this. That's the first part of the melody. So now we're in the key of C. So I wrote this introduction using the drop two technique like this. There's a drop two voicing there. Now, how did I get that? Well, it's really, that's the chord. 
then you could think of it as a G sharp diminished. But I'm taking the second note from the top and I'm voicing it in the left hand, so it creates a real pretty sound. Now, what I did also with the F sharp diminished there, I did the same thing, putting the F sharp down below. But what I did that was interesting in this introduction that was different from others that I played is I had a, they were offset from each other. In other words, the melody in the le in the right hand moves, and the melody or the accompaniment in the left hand moves separately rather than together. Not like this. That's together. They're offsetting each other like this. So first the right hand moves, then the left hand moves, and then together. Then the left hand moves, then the right hand moves, and then together. Then the right hand moves, then the left hand, and then the right. So that's pretty interesting, I think. Now that's something that's easy to do, and it just breaks up and makes your line more interesting. And I think you can learn to do that fairly easily. So let's listen to it one more time. See how they offset now? I had this rising line in the harmony now. I go to this tritone substitute there. Now that's the first note of the melody. Here I now I go into the drop two voicings on the A section, which we'll talk about in the next segment. This song adapts well to the drop two because of all the diminished chords. You have C, you have C to C sharp diminished to D minor seven, then a D sharp diminished, and there's a little rub there with the melody. So I use I, the way I fix that is I put the F sharp in there. Then a C chord inverted to an E7 to an F. It's very similar to uh, this song. Ain't misbehaving, but anyway. So the way I voiced it, I did the drop twos like that. Now, basically, the, all that is, is, it's easy to figure out the drop twos if you can voice the melody in such a way that you're playing the melody note on top and the voicing of the chord below it. So you're picking up the harmonies of the chord below, below the melody, like this. So like the melody would be this. Okay, so. There's that diminished chord again. Now you see, you have to know where the diminished chords are and where to put them. But, but then, once you've learned how to do that in the right hand, then you can learn the drop too easily by just dropping the second note from the top down. So it will be this. Here's the first one. Here's the first one, that diminished chord moving to this C6. So now I'll take that second note from the top and put it here. It creates a really pretty sound, I think. Like that, then here's another drop too. That's another C sharp diminished voice down there to the D minor, and then another drop two here to the D sharp diminished. And then I did fix this uh, chromatic dissonance by going like. Then I did this. There's another drop two on the F sharp. There's that second note coming down. And I, that's a fourth voicing. So how do I know that? They're all fourths. Fourth here, major fourth, major fourth, major fourth. Okay, they're all fourths. Now here I just, and then I, I put this half diminished chord there, and then C sharp, and then and I did kind of a figure. Now here's another drop two figure. I've, here's a. a, a two measures where there's nothing happening, so I need to fill. So I put this melodic line. Take me back to the A section. So now I voiced it like this. That's about as pretty as it gets with the drop two technique. And it works really well on these melodic lines that have stepwise movement, like, or chromatic movement. Like here's here's a stepwise movement, so I have right diminished, six diminished, six, you know, then another diminished chord here, then right down the scale, and then I'm ending up with a diminished chord approaching the next section. Now I 
I'm going to go to the next segment, which is the locked hands technique. If these techniques that I'm talking about are new to you, then you want to go back to my previous videos in which I discuss the drop two and the locked hands, arpeggiated left hand, all these techniques, spread voicings, they're all dealt with. I have over a hundred videos now, so you can go back and study them in detail. But the next technique that happens here on the next segment, I go into what is the locked hands technique, which all it is is really doubling the melody like this. So I'm doubling it, the melody with the left hand. So like, let's look at that broken down. Like that. But now I'm filling in the harmony in the right hand so that it sounds fuller like this. This is a Mel Buckner and George Shearing Ahmad Jamal used this technique, Bill Evans uses it, and um, Nat King Cole, so like it sounds like this. And I did some fill figures like. Like that. So that's all that is. Now you want to look at those videos that I had on those specific techniques to understand it better. But that's what works now to build it to the next section. So now we'll move into the, the bridge. At the end of this section, I just went into like more like a spread voicing and then to here in a spread voicing and with a linear figure doubled in both hands. Okay, so we'll move to the next section. The bridge moves into the two chord, which is a D minor chord. And not a D minor seventh, but just a D minor. But, um, so you're gonna approach it, you're on the F major, you're gonna approach it with a two five. So I used that actually, approaching a minor chord, I would use a half diminished chord, which is an E minor seven. But what I did, something different with it, like I did a, a melodic line like this. But then I had the, pedal tone down here of the A, and I went like this. So I'm going like that. I'm doubling the melody here, like locked hands, but I'm putting the pedal tone in there. So that's a little kind of different thing. And now I go to block chords. Now here I can do some interesting things with the melody. Now it goes major seven, minor major seven, Minor, major seven, minor seven. Now here's a voicing approaching the next chord, which is an A minor. Now here, now a descending line in the bass. Now here's a kind of a Bill Evans uh, diminished fill, where he doubles, he gets a diminished chord going, and then he doubles, he gets a harmonic complement to the melody. Now we get to the F major. Now I'm playing six. Those are sixths in the in the right hand. So in other words, the more you can mix up these techniques, the better your arrangement is going to sound. Now here's fourth voicings here. I might ask, what are those? Well, let's look at them. Major fourth, major fourth. Then there's a major third there. So and they go parallel like this. They're really interesting sounding. To here, then I just did a descending arpeggio in, in the right hand, in the left hand, complementing the right hand melody. In quote. That winds up the bridge. Now we'll go to the last section. This last section of the song now, this is kind of exciting to try to explain this because the concept is that you want to build your arrangement or your solo, whatever you're playing, so that it has a dramatic way of building and it progresses through the arrangement. So it changes and has variety. So it's like telling a story in which, you know, you start out like this and you develop it, becomes more and more interesting and the, you're, you're pulling your 
listener into the whole experience. That's what you want when you play music. So at the end there, I'm playing the octaves and more of the arpeggiated movement. There's more movement. Maybe now I get subtle after that, that dramatic or passionate point of climax. Now down and get subtle now and get quiet and now get more pensive. Now you really have the emotion, the full dynamics of the emotion. That's what you want here. That's what you want in your music. That's what you want in your life. So now we'll wrap up. Wrapping up, I'd just like to say thanks so much for joining me here at the Jazz Ranch. And please write to me. I will always respond to your notes. And until next time, I'll say, guys, watch out for those girls on your right and left side. And until then, in words of Hermie Dressel, my great friend, he said, swing loose. Bye-bye. <laughs>